if I tells me my fate. My 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 fate is the thing that I have gotta live. But my my ori is my is my identity. Right? So I, I like to use the example of a, of a of water, right? Of a river, let's say. You got a river, your the river is your ori. The river is your identity. The river starts in a spring in a mountain and it cascades down the mountain and goes through a meadow and joins up with a, a bigger river and it flows over rocks and then goes off a waterfall and then flows into the ocean. It's always water though. It might even go and flow into salt water. It evaporates, right, and then comes down as rain, but it's water. It's always water. That's your ori. You're in the heavenly state, you're in the earthly state, this is your first life, your second life, third life, your fourth, you know what I mean? You go through that water cycle, transforming, but you're always you. The, the ori is permanent. That's the part of you that never dies. That's your ori. It's consistent and perpetual. But from the spring down, cascading down and through and over the rocks and all that, that's your fate. That's your ifa. Your ifa is what's going to tell you all the different things you have to experience in order to be transformed and go through the cycle. That's fate. Okay? Orumila is the eleri. Orumila is the witness of fate. He's the one that observed. When your ori says, I'm going to come up through this spring in the mountain, Orumila was there. Oh, this person's going to be born here in, this, in, the, in, the, in the mountain spring. Oh, and they're gonna, they choose they're going to go down the mountain. You're going to flow through a valley. Oh. Okay? You're going to go through the rocks. A waterfall. That's creative. Okay? Then, oh, you flow into the ocean. That's a wonderful finish. I like it. That's Orumila's job. He's just going to write to your father. So that you get born, what do you do? You, you're somewhere in the middle of that cycle. You need direction. You need a reorientation. You go and consult your father. I was going to tell you, this is where you are in the, in the flow of things. Right? So this is how Orumila is uniquely qualified to give you advice about what to do and what not to do because Orumila saw what your original choice was. Okay? Sure. But still, all the while, you're, you're remembering, who am I? So, um, oh, this is, this is a verse from uh, Irosu Ose. Irosu Ose. Irosu on the right. Ose on the left. Okay, Irosu Ose. This Ifa says, the spittoon with a, with a small mouth is drawn close to the cushion. It's a, it's a metaphor for a calabash. It's the, the Akoto is the biggest calabash with a big wide mouth. This is the one who cast Ifa for any young human being who was a slave of his Ikbin. Ikbin is your heavenly portion. Ikbin is that when you make that, when you make that choice in the heavenly realm, there's, there's the part of your ori that comes to the world, but then there's a part of you that stays in the heavenly realm. So it's kind of like your any catch, your, your, your double that remains. So everything I'm doing here, <coughs> with my no dancing self, and I'll be here and I'm trying to dance and I'm dancing on beat. <laughs> my my ping is up there doing the same thing. But I think it's better. I think I think my heavenly self is a better dancer than my <laughs> I gotta believe that. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta have hope. It's gotta be better than this somewhere. <laughs> so this is the one who it, uh, Anion was the slave of his ping, Right? Because that's the one. Heaven is our home, earth is the marketplace. It's that dimension of your identity that is really running the show. This is kind of like a shadow. Um, this is the one who cast the for a who was a slave to his Ipin. They said he should sacrifice unless his master in heaven would carry him home that year. Anion did not sacrifice. So Anion is human being. Anion is human being. All of us is Anion. Anion came to the world and as the previous verse was telling us, uh, Romila says some are going to be carvers, some are going to be palm oil processors, some are going to be weavers, some are going to be sculptors. Anion is in the world doing all these things. Building a world, building a world, building a world. It's magnificent. 
But Enion is doing all this on their own strength. And Enion is not making sacrifice and paying homage to the ones behind the scenes that are allowing Enion to do what we do. So the, the deities are there and they're saying, well, we're working for Enion, we're helping Enion accomplish things, but Enion is not reciprocating. What's, 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 what's up with this? And they keep discussing it, they, and finally they say, you know what, Ordi, go get Enion. And this is the this is severe, right? Because your Ordi is is your master. You know, your Ordi is your every that's your identity. They sent Ordi to go and get Enion. So Ordi goes and gets Enion. He grabs Enion by the feet and drags Enion out of the house. He's dragging Enion, dragging Enion, drags Enion past Ogun. Hey, Ogun, baby, Ogun, save me. Ogun comes out of the house. He looks and he sees Ordi dragging Enion. Ordi. Why are you dragging Enion like that? Or he says, Enion refused to make sacrifice. Oh, Ogun said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> they drag him past the house of Shango, or Badala, or Shun, all, all the deities. They pass all their house, and each time Enion screamed, please. And each time the deities come out, each time Ori would explain the situation, can't help you. Until they got to the house of Orumila. Enya is being dragged. And he calls out, Orumila, Gbemio. Orumila comes out. He says, Ori, why are you dragging Enya like that? Ori says, because Enya refused to sacrifice. Orumila says, well, what's the sacrifice? And Ori names the sacrifice. Rats, it's fish, it's gold, it's palm oil, it's this much money. Oromila says, okay, wait. Just hold on. Oromila goes inside his house. He goes into the shrine. He gathers up all the sacrificial items. He goes to Ori and says, it's okay. Release Enya. I will go and make the sacrifice on Enya's behalf. And so Oromila accompanied Ori from earth back to the heavenly realm with the sacrifice. Oromila performed the sacrifice and appeased all of the Orisha on Enion's behalf. And the Orisha were pleased. They said, Oromila, you did good. This is exactly how it should be. From now on, every year, Enya has to appease Ori. And when they appease their ori, or romila, they will also have to take care of you. From this moment forward, you will be recognized as the eleri ipin, the intermediary of fate. And so Orumila is the one who helps us manage our fate so that our destiny can be fulfilled. That's one reason. There are other, you, there you go through other verses and they'll tell you other reasons why Orumila is a Larry P. But that is one. Orumila saves us by being willing to serve, as I mentioned before. The others were, ah, I can't do that. Sorry. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to stop hammering. Ogun is not going to stop working. For you? Man. You know what I'm working on? You got this iron all hot. I'm halfway through. <laughs> I do love you though, but I'm not going. All of them have reasons why they got to keep doing what they're doing. But Oromila says, okay, hold on, I, I, I'll do it. He, he'll go that extra mile to serve. This is who Oromila is. This is what Oromila embodies for us. This is the example that Oromila sets for us. Serve. Go the extra mile. Be willing to do more than what it takes to help make this right, to rectify the situation, to bring balance, and keep things moving forward. Lastly, we look at another of the Oriki of Oromila. He is called Agbamirekun. Agbamirekun. Agbamirekun can be this coconut 
must have long life. Okay, fool. This is telling us that a woman is synonymous with longevity. Agbon can be Agbon Tio Niregun, the coconut that will never be forgotten. Irete Obe, the coconut that will never be forgotten. Similar ideas, permanence, right? Longevity, endurance. Lastly, it can be Agbon Niregun, which also comes from Irete Obe. Agbon Niregun. Agbon Oniregun. This one is the coconut of reproach. Coconut of reproach. This tells us of a time when Akala and Amosun. Akala is the child of Obatala. Amosun is the child of Oromila. They came to the world together. Akala had a drum. Amosun had wisdom. Each of them was assigned 200 people when they got to the world. Amosun thought it would be wise, given the fact that he had 200 people and they were living in the world, he started to think about subsistence. He cleared the land, he planted seeds, and he made a garden. <clears throat> Akala had the drum. And so Akala, they, they played drums, they sang, they danced, they celebrated, and they were partying and enjoying life until they got hungry. And then Akala had to go to Amosun's people. Amosun said, fine, I'll feed you, but you got to give me two people. So Akala said, no problem. Akala gave two of his people to Amosun, but didn't change pattern. They kept, they kept drumming and dancing and singing and having a good time until they got hungry again. And they went back to Amosu. He says, you got any more food? He says, yeah, of course. But you're going to have to give me four people. So Akala gave him four people. And this keeps going over and over until Akala ended up giving all of his people to Amosu. So eventually, Orumila and Obatala come back. They want to see how are our sons doing in the world? What have they, what have they made of the resources that we gave to them? So they get to the world, and they go. And first, Obatala asks, what about my boy, Akala? And the people said, Akala what? Akala. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't. I don't know Akala. They go here. They go there. Nobody knows Akala. Wow. So Romila says, "Let me ask if anybody knows about Amosun. Have you guys ever heard of Amosun? Do y'all know Amosun? Oh, Amosun. Oh, go up to Oketase. Amosun is there. He's got a gang of people up there, and they they've got it going on. Go go see them. You'll you, you'll hear the, you'll hear the drums." from before you get halfway up the hill. <laughs> so they go. And sure enough, as they get there, they can hear the drums, they can hear the festivals, festivities going on. And <clears throat> from a distance, it turns out that Amosu is having a festival. And Orumila is far from it, but, it's, but it's, Akala, uh, Amosu is kind of on a throne, and he has his irukere, and he's waving it, and he sees his father in the distance, and he's just, just kind of like, what's up, Pops? <laughs> you know? And Orumi is like, yeah. So Amosun sends some of his people. And they go, they receive Orumi La. But when they get to Orumi La, they, they're, they're, they don't really recognize Orumi La. They don't show him the respect that they should. So they got so bad that they start, you know, rummaging through Orumi La's bag. Or Romila had some coconuts in his bag. They took his coconuts and they just ate his coconuts. They just kind of like, you know, treating him average. So Romila is obviously displeased. He says, after everything is all settled in, he says, Amosun, you did good with what I left you. But you've gotten kind of uppity. 
<laughs> that little success has gone to your head. <laughs> your people came over here, and the worst of it all, they took my coconuts and they ate them. From now on, you're going to call me Agbong Onireku. These are the coconuts of reproach. You want to know of my displeasure. Every year from now on, you will come back to this place and you will have a festival in my honor. Orumila tied a sash around his body and then turned into a stone. And that is the stone at Oketase where you make the Ebo every year. Every year when we, when, so when you cast Ifa, this is key. Every year we cast Ifa for the world at Oketase, right? Y'all know that, right? Every year, and they have to make Ebo on this stone, which is representative of Orumila himself. But Orumila turned into the stone out of displeasure. And every year we do that, dip, that, that ritual to renew our pact with Orumila. It's not just casting Ifa every year. We're supposed to be renewing our pact with Orumila. We're supposed to be renewing our commitment to doing things the way that Oromila taught us to do things. We're supposed to be remembering oh, we got an opportunity. We were blessed with something. We had resources and we were successful and then we got a little bit beside ourselves and we mistreated Baba. That's what's supposed to be happening at that ritual every year. When we get that message from Oketase, it's supposed to be reorientating the world. This is how we get back on track. This is how we get back on track. This is how you renew your understanding of the mission. What's the mission? We don't know. We don't have a mission. We get the message and there's no mission. The, the, the message is given independent of any kind of mission. Oh, you do whatever you want. You do what you want. You do what you want. You go, hey, go over there if you want to. No. We have one mission, to save the world. Hello? I sure. How come nobody's talking about the mission? How come nobody's reminding that you have an obligation to this time? You're supposed to show up right here, right now, with all of your natural gifts and talents to do one thing, save the world. How come nobody is saying that to you? Why are we getting this message from Oketase Year after year after year after year after year with no context for what it means to you. We have a mission. Save the world. 